In part 5 of this video series, you prepared the temperatures, ECAD data, 3D geometry, and the materials, all in Workbench. In this video, we'll finish the setup by assigning materials to the model, automatically assigning metal fraction data to the mesh, and importing temperatures into the model. Finally, we'll use ANSYS Mechanical to compute solutions for total deformation, equivalent stress, and elastic strain. In Workbench, right-click the model cell to open Mechanical. Select the PCB layers. Assign FR4 for their material property. Select the heat sinks and assign aluminum alloy. To assign copper for the stack up layers, we need to know the proportion of metal and non-metal on each layer. This metal fraction data can be automatically calculated by ANSYS Mechanical. But before using this technique to map the metal fraction data onto the board, we need a mesh. So enter box selection mode. Select only the board as shown here. Click Mesh in the outline window. From the Mesh Control drop-down menu, select Method. Leave Scoping Method as Geometry Selection. Define Method as Sweep, since we want a uniform mesh of hex elements on the board. This works best for mapping and representing the metal in the PCB. Define Element Mid-Size nodes as Dropped to optimize computational resources for the simulation. Go back to the Mesh option. Specify Element Size as 0.5 mm. This is the discretization size for the geometry. Right-click Sweep Method and select the Generate Mesh option. ANSYS Mechanical rapidly creates the mesh. Click the Show Mesh button. You can see that the ICs and heat sinks are represented by a tetrahedral mesh. But the board is meshed with hexahedral elements to exploit ANSYS Mechanical's metal fraction assignment technique, as it works best on a hex mesh. I'll explain this in a bit. To initiate this, connect the Layer Metallization System's setup cell to the model cell of the mechanical system in Workbench. Edit the model cell. Rereading the upstream data updates mechanical with the imported trace setup. Hide the mesh now. Click Imported Trace. Drag the cursor clockwise and select the layers of the board as shown. For the properties of Imported Trace, select the Geometry field and click Apply. Double-click the external data identifier to specify File 1. Remember, File 1 is an identifier for the ODB++ ECAD data for the board. Now define the material for the metal fraction on each layer. Select Copper Alloy from the drop-down menu. You can simply copy Copper Alloy and paste in the remaining fields. The thickness is shown for each layer. In the rectangular grid, where Mechanical reads the details on each layer of the board, the cross-section automatically gets included in the calculation of metal fraction. Every finite element in the board can contain a mixture of metal and insulator. The insulator material was set to be FR4. In this dialog, we can choose the material for any metal on the layers, in this case, copper. Later, when we apply the trace mapping procedure, it will set the fraction of metal and insulator for each element. In the metal fraction assignment technique, Mechanical automatically computes the effect of material properties for its 3D mesh based on the metal and dielectric distribution in the original ECAD model. In this technique, ANSYS Mechanical generates a point cloud representation of the internal details of the entire board on a rectangular grid. Each grid cell is divided into sampling points representing the mixture of metal and dielectric. These cells are mapped onto the finite element mesh as data points. Using these data points, Mechanical assigns an effective material property to each mesh element based on a weighted average of the metal and dielectric properties. As it assigns the properties from element to element, this eventually develops into a spatially varying metal fraction on a large scale. You'll see this metal fraction once you import it onto the mesh. In ANSYS Mechanical, turn on Display Source Points to verify that the metal fraction domain comprising the data points coincides with the board. Select the x-coordinate to align the board along the yz-plane. Go to wireframe mode. Zoom in to the board and check if the data points of the metal fraction coincide accurately with the board geometry. Now right-click Imported Trace. Select Import Trace. The computed metal fraction material property gets assigned onto the different layers of the PCB. Switch off the source points display and select wireframe to view the metal fraction clearly. As mentioned earlier, this plot represents the large-scale spatial distribution of metal and dielectric. Regions in red are mostly metal, in this case copper. Blue means little or no metal, mostly dielectrics. All other colors between blue and red represent the fraction of copper and non-metal. This contour plot shows the metal fraction on the top layer. We can see the metal fraction for any layer of interest by hiding the other layers. 
For example, here's the metal fraction on a dielectric layer. Red areas here correspond to the metal vias passing through the dielectric. The next step is to import temperatures. In Workbench, connect the solution cell of the ice pack temperatures to the static structural setup cell. Edit the setup to update the upstream data. This connects the ice pack solution to the model in Mechanical and creates an imported load option in the outline window of ANSYS Mechanical, as shown. Enter box selection mode. We want to transfer temperatures for the entire board as well as its components and heat sinks. So right click in the geometry window and select all, and click apply. Under the transfer definition option you can select all for ice pack body or exclusively choose only the objects of your interest for which you want temperatures. Here we'll select all. Right click imported body temperatures and select import load from the shortcut menu. This command transfers the temperature data from ice pack onto the geometry in mechanical, as shown. You may notice that the minimum value of temperature was about 19 degrees C in the ice pack simulation, but it is now about 32 degrees C. That's because ice pack included the surrounding cabinet in its simulation, but we removed the cabinet from the model earlier in space claim. Red and blue markers indicate the regions of maximum and minimum temperatures. At this point, you're ready to generate solutions for thermal-induced stress and deformation. Select Analysis Settings. Define the solver type as Direct. For these thin board models, a direct solver is highly efficient. Turn on Weak Springs. This option will hold the model lightly without itself introducing any stress into the board, and also prevents rigid body motion. Right-click Solution and insert Total Deformation. Similarly, insert Equivalent Stress as a solution option. Press F5 to generate the solution. From the Edges drop-down menu, click No Wireframe. Here's the plot for thermal deformation of the board, its components, and heat sinks. This plot portrays deformation of the model. Here you see the equivalent stress. You can also animate these plots. Go to the Graph window. Define the frames and time. Play the animation. Higher concentrations of copper on the top layer cause the board to bow in the middle because copper has a higher coefficient of thermal expansion than the FR4. The maximum stress is 51 megapascals. Let's check the tensile yield strength for copper and aluminum. Go back to Workbench and open the engineering data cell. Select aluminum alloy. The tensile yield strength of aluminum alloy is 280 megapascals. It's the same for copper. So this simulation predicts that the board is below the tensile yield stress and is sufficiently safe. Now generate a solution for strain. The strain plot helps you determine locations of potential delamination and fracture. Select the max marker. Maximum strain occurs at this location. Zoom in. This is where the layers will tend to pull away from the object in contact with it. In this case, maximum strain is under the microprocessor U100. You could perform additional advanced analyses by including solder balls in the model to assess the robustness of the packages on the board. You can also perform metal fatigue and fracture processing analysis to see if the board will hold up over time. This concludes our video series on how to perform multi-physics DC electrical, thermal, and structural analysis of a printed circuit board.